Hey y'all, Brandon Renus here. Hope you're doing absolutely amazing. So we're gonna talk about Obamacare, Donald Trump care, or whatever else this is gonna be. Remember Donald Trump, he said he was gonna repeal and replace Obamacare. So we're gonna go, and go into those details, but before we go into those details, let me start by saying that we need to talk about the history of insurance and what has created this problem. We keep hearing all these people, oh, I've got the solution, I've got the solution. But to me, it's asinine. Would you, when we're looking at the economic issues that we have in our country, do we want to listen to an economist that didn't see any of this coming, but he all of a sudden thinks he has the solutions? Or do we want to listen to the guy that actually said, hey, 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 we're heading towards trouble, we're heading towards worse unemployment, we're heading towards a wider uh, inequality gap, whatever it is that you believe in, and you want to listen to the person that has credibility that pointed out, hey, the 2008 recession was going to happen. Or a doctor. Let's say you, you go in and you're like, hey, I'm going to lose my leg, and you... You have the option between the doctor who says, yeah, let's just chop that thing off. You'll be good, good to go. Or the doctor that says, yeah, you have diabetes. I've been telling you you need to get your diet under control. I've been telling you you need to be using your insulin. And because you haven't, we can chop your leg off. But these are the steps you can take so that way it doesn't get worse. Which doctor do you want? I want the doctor. I want the economist that actually has been warning about these things, recognizing what's going on. And so that's what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the actual history of it, recognize what happened. What got us to this point? And then we're going to go to the solutions and whether Donald Trump is promoting good solutions or bad solutions. We'll get into that. So our country started off with an astronomical, I mean, we just had a free country. It was, uh, anybody could get in, we, anybody could do what they wanted. We had super cheap medical care and it was the best medical care in the world. So what happened? Things changed. Well, what happened is after World War II, we started having this huge inflow of doctors that started coming into the United States from all these other countries. And our doctors in the United States said, hey, this is bad. Like all the successful people in other countries that are blown to smithereens, they're coming to the United States. And now we can't make as much money because we have way more competition. So what we need to do is we need the government to help protect us. We need licensing. We need registration. We need them to go through all these extra hoops to make it more difficult for them to become a doctor, allowing us to keep making more money, which of course hurts the poor and the middle class. But don't worry about that. It only gets worse. So they did this. They created licensing and, and all these different things, making it more difficult. All this different research you would have to do, the different studying you'd have to do to become an actual doctor in the United States. Then the FDA got involved. It started regulating medicine. Now, right now, it costs, I believe it's uh, actually right, I have it written down, nearly $3 billion, $2.5 to $3 billion to get a new piece of medicine onto the market. So think about that. That's not a free market. If you want, if I have the cure for cancer, I have to somehow come up with $3 billion in order to get it through the FDA. That's assuming it gets through. Huge, huge amount of them don't get through. Also, you have to put yourself, it gets worse than that. It also takes right around three years. So I could have that product, I have to be able to come up with $3 billion, let's say I somehow get a loan of $3 billion. I have to be able to come up with $3 billion, I have to be able to pay insurance on this loan for $3 billion, and then I have to hope it goes through. And the problem with it going through is put yourself in the FDA shoes. So you're the FDA, you work at the FDA. If you allow every drug to go through, even if it went through all the testing, everything seems legit, and it's a bad drug and it ends up hurting people or killing people, you lose your job. You go bankrupt. But if you stop good drugs from going through, it doesn't matter. All the people that would have got the drugs, they don't know about it. They're dead. They can't come and complain to you. So as an FDA official, you're not motivated to help get these drugs through the market. So of course, when somebody has to pay $3 billion and take three years out of their time, this is all losses that the business is going to do. First of all, what does that do? It destroys all small business and all, all middle men, all middle class, destroys all of them. They can't compete. So the only people who can compete are the top, top, top 1% huge big pharma. Once they get a drug on the market, they don't have to worry about competition. Who can afford the whole system? Who can afford the three years and the $3 billion to compete with them with their drugs? So guess what they do get to do? Jack up their rates, jack up their costs. And on top of that, we get to suffer because there's not nearly as many drugs that could be curing lives and saving people because they can't get through the bureaucracy of government. Oh, it gets worse. Don't worry. We're just getting started. But can you, I'm sure you're probably already noticing, huh? 
all of a sudden prices are going to start going up for the people. Yeah, in our country. So then the government says, hey, what we need to start doing is handing out tax credits to businesses who help supply insurance to their employees. You know, as a, as a government official, I need to start promoting these things so that way the people who got the insurance through their business now, they will vote for me because a politician, you always want to get voted back into office. So you start promoting these ideas. Well, that works out really good. You give the benefits to the business. The business, business has success. The employees get insurance. They're all happy. But then what happens? Well, if you get in, in an injury or you get cancer or anything else that you were able to pay low rates for beforehand, but then you have a pre-existing condition while you're working for the company and they fire you? Well, how do you get more insurance? You're on your own. Nobody's going to give you insurance unless it's super high rates because you have pre-existing conditions. So because you're not individually going there, it matters when you lose your job. And now, because you're not individually paying, you lose your insurance because you lost your job. Oh, well, guess what that means? Oh, rates go higher. Interesting, are we sensing a trend? Then, 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 the government gets involved again. Isn't this weird how everything involves government? Shocking, shocking. But that's all right, we'll keep going. The government gets involved again and it says, hey, so what we need to do is we need to regulate insurance companies. So what we had is insurance companies, they had somewhat of a free market or mostly free market, although the rest of this medical industry was getting completely taken over by government. But the insurance companies had too many options that they were giving people. And what the government said is, hey, you guys are not allowed to give insurance. You guys need to be able to cover everything. So whenever I go to the hospital, I need to get covered. Well, see, when you get insurance for your car, is your oil change covered? Are your tires covered? Is your windshield getting replaced covered? Oftentimes, I guess that is sometimes. How about your windshield wipers, your seat buckles, your car cleaning? See, those are things that an insurance company says, hey, you have to be a responsible adult. You have to take care of those things. But what we will take care of are the big money issues. The issues where, hey, we have a huge amount of money coming in because you just totaled your vehicle. You just got creamed by a deer. Okay, those are the issues that we will take care of. In insurance, it used to be that I could pay as a person. I could say, hey, I will take care of all the small stuff. And then you will cover anything that's, you know, 10 grand or more. And then you'll take care of all that stuff. Well, if that was the case, I didn't have to pay hardly anything for insurance. I could pay dirt cheap rates, but no, 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 no. Got to have government. They got to come in. So they took care of that. They wiped that out. They made it illegal to provide insurance to people. Yeah, I don't know what you consider covering everything, going to the doctor, getting your physical, getting your checkups, all that stuff. But now that's covered. So that means you have to pay even more for your insurance. And people like me get screwed. Of course, the government got involved more and said, hey, you have to actually take percentages of my money, jack up my rates to help cover other people with pre-existing conditions because you can't charge them too high of rates. So that means that my insurance went up. As a healthy person who takes care of himself, my insurance rates go up to cover other people. In other words, they're taking my money to pay for other people without my choice. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Sensing a trend. So these are all things that are going on in our country. This is without even mentioning, let me go to my notes real quick, tort reform, frivolous lawsuits, how absurdly expensive doctors, uh, how, how absurdly expensive it became to become a doctor. So all the different schooling you have to go through, the different regulating processes, all the licensing, all that stuff, all those things. So are you sensing, seeing, recognizing how each one of these things drives price higher and higher and higher and higher, drives quality lower, and on top of that, it helps big pharma because it's driving all their competition out. Nobody can get new drugs on the market. Nobody can compete with these big businesses. Nobody can compete in the insurance industry. Why? Because all these rules and regulations, the only people it helps are the huge big dogs up on top because they get to line their pockets. If I don't have competition, guess what I get to do? Jack up my rates. So we're having a problem. So then Obamacare comes along. Obama has the solution. Now, now, granted, the people who promoted Obamacare, they didn't recognize any of these problems I pointed out. Oh, they, they, they saw that the prices were going up and quality was going down. Yeah, yeah, they, they said that, but they were just like that doctor who said, yeah, let's chop off your leg and you'll be good to go. They didn't recognize why you had to get your leg chopped off. They didn't recognize why the prices were going up, why the quality was going down. And so their solution for a government problem was more government. That's, that's how they were going to fix it. Ah, let's see how this works. 
So they create Obamacare. And what they do is they say, hey, insurance companies, you guys need to be forced to take care of people with pre-existing conditions. You cannot stop uh, giving them insurance or you, um, or you cannot even not give them insurance. You have to give them insurance. Okay. But then they realized that's kind of a problem. If we guarantee everyone insurance, well then the people like myself and all the healthy people, they're gonna get charged really, really high rates. They're not gonna have any reason to wanna to get insurance. Why would I, as a healthy 20 year old person, want to get insurance? Why would I, as a healthy 30 year old person, want to get insurance when it's gonna cost me as much as if I was a sick person because I'm paying for all these sick people? So Obama says, I have a solution for that too. Let's put out fines. Yeah, let's fine them. Let's force them to join. Yeah, it's sucky care. Yeah, it's so bad that they wouldn't join willingly. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a gun to their head. We're going to say, if you don't pay this, we're going to ship you to prison <laughs> at gunpoint. If you don't go to prison, you get shot. Woo, America, home of the free, land of the brave. Yeah, Obama, Obama care. So that's how good it was. It was so great. So what ended up happening? Well, the care was so crappy and the rates were so high, the healthy people said, you know what? I would rather pay the fine. It gets worse. On top of that, Obama says, you know what we got to do? We need to force employers to give insurance to people if they have over 50 employees that are working full time. Ah, that's a great idea. That will be big business. We're going to really stick it to big business, right? Yeah, yeah. Woo -hoo, good thing Obama's showing up and sticking up to big business. So what does big business do? Well, they fire their full-time workers, so they have 49 full-time workers, and then everybody else they hire part-time at 29 hours a week. This is why businesses had 49 employees and 29 hour employees, and it is called 49ers and 29ers. It's very common in the business world. So people who went from full-time jobs now lost their insurance, their benefits, and everything else, and had their hours cut thanks to Obamacare. Oh, isn't it great? But don't worry guys, it really made Obama's numbers look great. Because hey, every full-time job now gets replaced, or a lot of full-time jobs, now get replaced with two or three part-time jobs. So hey, look at all the job creation. Go Obama, look at you creating all these jobs. Granted, it's each person's working four jobs now, but hey, it's job creation. <laughs> Obama, you're such a great job creator. Thank you for helping our country. And this, is why insurance rates went sky high. After just one year, rates went up over 100% in multiple states, over up to over 20% in, I think, the majority of states. So the only people that are getting on the insurance are people that need insurance now. They need medical care now. Everybody else is just paying the fine. So you don't have the healthy people paying in because they realize that this is way too expensive and it's way too bad for me, I'll just pay the fine. I will risk it going without insurance. And that is Obamacare. It's a complete disaster, right? So what we have is Donald Trump. Donald Trump comes in, the white knight on the shining horse, and he rides in, oh, I won the election, I fulfill my promise, I'm going to create Trump care. And so the Republicans, they get all excited. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait, we got rid of Obamacare, we're gonna get rid of it, yeah, 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 we've hated Obamacare, Obama sucks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in Republican care, yeah. So let's see what the changes are that they are going to do to Obamacare. Uh, well, they're still going to keep the pre-existing conditions, which was a kind of a big problem in the last plan, but we'll get there in a minute. Employers are not forced to pay for insurance after 50 employees. Oh, cool. Look at that. People actually have the freedom to choose to do what they want. How cool is that? Uh, the 29 hour rule is taken out. Awesome. Thank you, Republicans. That is excellent. Investors now get to keep 4% more of their money that they earned. What it was was Donald or Obama decided, hey, one of the people we're going to take out is anybody that's investing money and you're profiting from it, we're going to take 4% of your profits for Obamacare. So now those investors actually get to keep 4% more of their own money. Or as Nancy Pelosi would say, those investors get to rob from the poor. I don't have words for it. It's a little over my head too. Don't worry. And they've taken out the fine for those who do not sign up for Obamacare. Oh, so everything's rosy, right? So Donald Trump, his cure is to hand out tax credits somewhere between 1,000 persons for 
$1,000 per person if you're like a healthy male that's young, all the way up to 14,000 bucks according to how big your family is or how old you are, so according to your risk, okay? So you get this tax credit, except it's not a tax credit, because even if you don't pay taxes, you get that money back. So it's not a tax credit. So it's actually wealth redistribution. So they take money from me and they hand it to other people. Yay, more welfare. It works so great. Corporate welfare, individual welfare, can't go wrong. I'm sure it's gonna be great. So that's their cure. So they have this pathetic tax credit that's not a tax credit that they hand to people. And then they hope that those people will then go out and buy insurance. Oh, okay. But then the problem becomes, why buy insurance? He still has the guarantee in there that even if I have a pre-existing condition, I get taken care of. Could you imagine, I want you, I want you to put yourself in this, these shoes here for a second. Imagine having uh, death insurance. So you, you die and you get, your family gets to get paid, uh, you know, a million dollars or whatever it is. So if I get in right now, you know, I'm a younger person, I'm healthy, I'm fit, or you know, hopefully anyway. Long story short, I'm gonna hopefully pay less money than somebody that's in their 50s or 60s because they're closer to dying, right? Well, let's say that death insurance had the same guarantee. It doesn't matter if you're about to die or not, you still have to uh, uh, charge lower rates for these people that are gonna die. Well, the company would go bankrupt within a day. They'd be like, I can't do this. I can't pay out a million dollar policy to somebody who just gives us a hundred bucks and then dies. That's absurd. But that's exactly what we have with insurance. Imagine your car insurance company. Hey, I didn't have insurance, just told my vehicle. Hey, Geico, um, you know, the government needs to force you to cover my car that I just totaled but I didn't have insurance on it. So now you cover it, please, thank you. Could you imagine how high the rates would be? I mean, rates are high enough the way it is. So that's what they're doing with insurance. So now the people like myself who are healthy, again, are the ones that have to pay for those who are not healthy. We go, hey, you know what? I am gonna sign up for, no, why would I sign up for insurance? I get a $1,000 credit or maybe I get a $5,000 credit of cash I can spend on whatever I want. I'm gonna go spend it on whatever I want. So Donald Trump says, you know what? That's true, or Donald Trump, I shouldn't say Donald Trump, Republicans. They say, you know what? This is a problem. So our solution, Obama's solution was to charge people a fine. Our solution is to say, hey, if you do try to get insurance and you have a pre-existing condition or you got a problem like that, you didn't have insurance and you all of a sudden try to get it last second, you have to pay 30% more on insurance. Okay. So my insurance would have been $1,500 and now I have to pay $1,800. Cool. I'm not going to pay for insurance until I need it. So the only people who are going to be on insurance are going to be those who need it. That got the broken arms, that got the cancer, or whatever else. Which means premiums are going to go sky high all over again. Nobody is learning a thing. Exact same problem. Trump care is not as bad as Obamacare. It's probably worse. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm saying that there are those benefit things, but those benefits mean nothing if you're not going to pay, like they can't, you can't pay for the program. They don't have the money to pay for the program. At least Obamacare was trying to pay for the program by raising taxes on the rich, which I do not support, but I'm saying he was trying at least by charging all these people different funds, by fining people who were not joining Obamacare. It was a horrible, horrible program. It was a complete failure. It's already failing. But at least he tried, he recognized, hey, my program has all these flaws, I'm gonna fix it with fines and forcing people to pay money that they shouldn't have to be forced to pay. If Trump care is going, if, if the Republicans are gonna put out a program that is this bad, let's just keep Obamacare. I, we're headed towards socialized medicine, which is horrible also. Since we don't believe in free markets, since we don't believe in competition, since we don't believe in these big pharmacies fighting against each other and small people being able to compete, might as well keep Obamacare, let it implode, and then we'll promote socialized medicine. I do not support socialized medicine, but that's exactly what we're heading towards, whether we swap to Trump Care or Obamacare. Might as well keep it. I'd rather stick with Obamacare and crash. Then you can at least blame Democrats. Now we can blame them both. Democrats are inept, Republicans are inept. Yay! And Re Democrats will now come up with another solution on how to fix healthcare after Trump Care falls apart and fails. And these are the same people that just nearly outspend every president in the history of the United States. I'm sure they've got a dandy solution. It's insane. Like I said, unless the program literally forces the politicians to be on the same insurance policies that we are on, it's gonna suck. That's my solution.
And for all you Republican diehards that are going to support Donald Trump no matter what, yay, this is so much better than Obamacare. Please tell me, what am I missing? What did I say that's wrong? Because I just gave you the facts on what I read on the articles or what I've read in the plan. If the politicians themselves are not forced to be on the same exact plan as us, it's going to suck. That's all I've got. Peace out, guys. Have a wonderful night.